Hi, my name is Lisa Diaz, and um, I would like to share with you a story about a young man who really surprised himself and did a wonderful thing some 25 years ago in Pontiac, Illinois. Um, young man's name was Jack Bristow. He was about 22 years old and fresh out of the police academy. He was at the Dairy Queen one night in Pontiac, Illinois, just drinking some Coca-Cola, trying to get caffeined up for the night because he was on the graveyard. And, and uh, pretty soon, uh, this two-way, over his two-way radio, he heard a call about an accident that had occurred at uh, 4-H Highway in Sandy Creek, right there, blocks from where he was. So he, he rushed to his cruiser, got in it, flipped the gumballs on. He had his brand new uh, black leather jacket on. It was pouring down rain. It was unbelievably cold outside. We're talking about a suburb of Chicago, okay? And, uh, and he, he took off like a torpedo to, to get to that site. And when he arrived, only moments later, uh, he observed a van overturned in the creek. The van had apparently gone over the T of an intersection and had kind of rolled and was now all the wheels up and only the back door of the van was exposed. And he quickly, without any concern for his brand new leather jacket, he quickly got out of his cruiser and ran down in the pitch dark of night, in the cold rain, and started to try to get, get to the driver of this vehicle. He went to the back doors, you know, he climbed up onto the van and opened the back doors and the person had either been living in their van or they had been moving at the time because he's like throwing out folding chair, stereo equipment, speakers, throwing stuff out until all of a sudden he grabs a gym shoe and someone's foot is in it. And he's like, oh, the driver, but I can't get the driver out because all this stuff is in the way. So he quickly gets out of the van and gets down to the side and without any concern for the brand new leather jacket, he goes into the cold, cold, muddy, murky, dirty water and trying to get to the side door of the van where he can get to the driver. He's you know, trying to get that door open, cannot get it open no matter how hard he tries, comes up for air, goes back down, the door is either jammed or it's lodged in the in the in the the bottom of Sandy Creek, and, but he will not give up. He he keeps trying to break the window open, and you know every every I want to say every couple minutes he emerges from the water to get more air and goes back down, and he he just cannot get this door open no matter how hard he tries. And at one point he had been so deep into the rescue he started to remember that he had just finished uh, a course in cold water drowning victims. And, and he, he, he was tangled in his head thinking, well, am I, is this a recovery effort? Am I trying to get a body for the family? Or, or am I going to be able to get this person out and, and save a life tonight? I mean, this was his first rescue effort. He was fresh out of school, 22 years old, OK? He finally gets the, the, the door open and reaches across to, to get the seatbelt off and, and realizes that it's a woman, a young woman, and she's in a, a uniform shirt from one of the local restaurants. Pontiac is a very small town, but he doesn't recognize the woman. In the meantime, he, 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 he looses the seatbelt, gets her out, gets her to the side of the creek, begins performing CPR. By then, first responders are showing up. And you know he's doing what he has learned to do, and, and in his mind, it's worth the effort, it's worth the trouble, because hypothermia could make this, this young girl seem dead, but really, she could still be alive, she could still be revivable, and he believes that. He believed it with all his heart, and he kept up, and he kept up with those thrusts, and with, and, and with you know the, the little breath you're supposed to do, I don't really know how you, call, how you call it, but he just would not give up on his 
CPR efforts, okay? And, and even some of the other guys who were there, some of the other uh, rescue people were telling him, let her go, man. She's gone. But he kept believing that if he just kept pushing and he kept doing what he had just been trained to do, he believed that he could bring her back, even though she had no life signs at all. And sure enough, as he's thrusting, as he's doing the chest compressions, he feels a surge of energy come through from his head down through his arms and, and into his thrust and, and out of this woman's mouth starts coming mud and this, <laughs> she's choking mud and water is just coming out of her mouth and, and he's elated. I mean, he's, he's just, adrenaline is just rushing through him, okay? As he's bringing her back, literally from the dead, he, he's, he, there, there aren't even words to explain the emotions that he was going through. And, and the people who were standing around, the firemen and the paramedics and everybody that was around him, I mean, they were a little bit involved in it, but not like Jack was involved. And I mean, this was his night, okay? He really, really brought her back from the dead. He was her angel that night. And that lady, that lady was me. Aww. That's powerful stories. Okay, we're having a